everyone, I'm Mike from Comp3 Interactive and today we're going to be taking a quick look at partial classes. Now, what are partial classes? Well, put quite simply, they are the ability to have multiple different scripts and classes but all associated with one parent or master class. Now, this isn't strictly Unity based, this is generic C Sharp functionality, but it does come in quite handy when your scripts in Unity are getting quite large. Now, we'll just jump straight into it and I'll show you what I mean. Now, as you can see, I've got a very simple scene. I'll just show you what it does. Uh, I've got a player, the white square, that's me, and three enemies, uh, the red squares. Now, all this does is I move around and when I get too close to an enemy, they start following me. And if I break that distance, then they stop. Very basic game. I wouldn't suggest making this game because it is absolutely boring. But the game isn't what we're actually talking about today. What we're talking about is making our script a little bit nicer. So we can see here that on our player game object, I have my player script. Now we'll just open that up in Visual Studio. And as you can see, it's just like any other script. You have your namespaces, you have your fields, you've got your methods. I've got a method for checking if the player actually has any input. If they do, then I've got movement methods, uh, taking damage, checking the health, killing the player, and finally, I've got an on-collision and on-trigger enter. Now, this isn't the best script. This isn't the best way of doing this, but uh, it's just a quick example. But as you can see, we don't really have much functionality for our player yet, but we're already almost at 100 lines of code. Now, when we start adding things, it's inevitably just going to get bigger and bigger, making it a lot harder to, to um, navigate around. So let's fix that. We pop back over into Unity. We can see we have our player script here, but what we can do, we can create a new C Sharp script and we'll just call this one player movement. Now we'll open this up in Visual Studio. And what we can start by doing, we can get rid of our start and update methods. We can also get rid of all of our namespaces and we no longer need to inherit from mono behavior. So now that we've done that, we want to make this player movement class as if it's already a part of our player class. Now to do this, if we jump back over to our player for a second, and in our class declaration, if we have the keyword partial, so now it reads public partial class player, we still inherit from mono behavior as we did before, but this opens it up now that we've declared it as a partial to actually, in effect, append extra scripts to our player class. So to do that, we can mark player movement as partial as well, and we'll rename player movement to match our parent class, which is player. So now that we have that, player movement is, in effect, attached to our parent player class. Now we can test this by taking all of, our, all of our methods that are responsible for movement out of our player class and pop them into our player movement class. Now we will need using Unity Engine in this class. But now as you can see, everything's working fine here can tidy this up a little bit and we see that our check for movement method which is inside of our player's parent script still recognizes that check for movement exists even though it's in a player movement script similarly we can also create another C sharp script in unity and we'll call this one player attack behaviors. If we just open that up 
as we did before, we'll get rid of start and update. We no longer want to inherit from mono behavior, but in this class, we want to take out our take damage, check health, and kill player methods. And we'll pop those in here. Now, what we need to do is just like the player movement script, we make player attack behaviors partial and then rename it to match the parent class. And we see there we have access to the health variable that we have inside our player script. And just so we can see everything's still working as we expect, back to Unity, click on our player icon. We can still see that we have our move speed and our health variable available in the inspector. And if we play the game, everything still works like it did before. And we only need to attach the parent player script to any of our game objects. The other two, the player movement and attack behaviors, can both be left outside of the object. And as you can see, we're already looking a lot cleaner inside our player parent object. Now, the way that I usually use this, I often have, well, I only really use it if my scripts are getting quite large. I don't make a habit of doing this, but it may be a good habit to get into. It cleans everything up for you. Now, like I said, the way that I usually use this, I'll have one script that contains all of my variables one script that contains all public methods, one that create, uh, contains all private methods, and then one that contains any mono behavior related methods such as on collision enter and on 2D, uh, on trigger enter. Now, you could build this any way that you like, any way that you see fit. I always like, again, prefixing any of my scripts with the parent name, so as you see, player movement and player attack behaviors, just that way you don't get confused as to what they're attached to. Another tip as well is create subfolders to contain all of your scripts, so your parent script and any of the partials that are attached to it. And that's about all I have for you today. Now, I hope you've learned something. This is quite useful in the right hands. Uh, I've been Mike from Comp3 Interactive. Make sure you follow us on Facebook and Instagram. That's comp3.interactive on both platforms. And I'll see you again very soon.